Hey y'all, Decamon here, and welcome back to Metaphor Refantasio. Last time, we thwarted the Day of Calamity by taking down the undead human, and then we basically had free time for a little while. We got to hang out with the party members, go to the desert and fight a giant manticore. That was just, it was just a fun time all around. But we are on our last bit of free time before the story seems to pick back up. Uh, so I was wondering why I couldn't hang out with Maria at all, and it turns out I'm missing a social stat. Uh, I need to upgrade my social stats at some point in order to hang out with her, although Brigitta needs a, wants to hang out again, so let's go do that. I did not expect her to be available again. You to rank four. I mean, we know the priorities, right? Uh, you know, party members, or not party members, uh, social links trump social stats. At least for the most part. Oh, just you. Ah, so it's you. You seem unscathed. Sorry. Sorry. If you're looking for work, there's nothing here for you today. So just go home. Did something happen? <sighs> Come inside. Did puppy run away? Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I no longer have any work for you. Why? The dog is no longer here. She ran away? You let her go? No, she ran away? That would have been preferable to the truth. Hmm? But no, she was taken. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I know you kept your silence as promised. Unfortunately, that didn't stop a thief from sneaking in disguised as a vendor and taking her away. They left behind a letter that read, Those who spread magic igniters shall face the wrath of God. It's not hard to imagine what happened to her. I'll find the culprit before long, and I'll make certain they get what they deserve. However, this isn't the work of a single person, but that of a larger organization. Those mm. people. Anti-Igniter extremists. A bunch of filthy, rotten cowards. Thought you were anti-Igniter. The pup was innocent in all of this. I shouldn't have kept her. <laughs> the moment I started caring about anything, I lose it. I knew that. I tried to keep my feelings out of it. But why did this have to happen? Oh dear. Brigitta seems to be fighting through the pain. For how long must I live in this hideous world? If only I had disappeared instead. Uh, tears or not, I can sense the pain, sadness, and frustration Brigitta is feeling. Words would be a little comfort here. Perhaps if I stirred her imagination, she would be relieved of such despair. Ah, uh, but I don't have sufficient imagination to do this, right? Is that what you're going to tell me? A book. I told Brigitta about the fantasy world depicted in my book, trying to give her even the faintest glimmer of hope. Oh, I see. I'm gonna share with her my Kingdom Hearts fanfiction. Well, people will help one another, respect one another, and live in equality. How quaint. But... The author was a sheltered man, I take it. He knows nothing of the real world. This world. The only equality is that we all inevitably die. The path to that point is different for everyone, meaning everyone has to fight through their own hell. Maybe. But I don't think so. Mm. That's not true, ma'am. Mm. Ah, you're an elder. You live in a world that hates you. How can you still make yourself believe in light, even through all of that? I can't see that light myself. But I know you can. And I really do want to believe in you and your vision. I can sense Brigetta's profound sadness and her grasping to trust. Speaking of grasping, oh my gosh, she's already rank four. All right, Merchant's got three inheritance slots now. Widens the variety of items sold at the Magic Association. Ooh, I wonder how that works. Hmm, more items are now available. I have to wait till the next Idols Day before I even consider buying anything though. In any case. Here's your pay. I've included what I set aside for your future shifts too. Thanks, I won't take it. I'll keep visiting though. I'll still keep visiting, Brigetta. Why? She's gone. I have no more work to give you. What's left for you here? You? You don't need to come here anymore. Oh dear. I left the room without another word. But 10,000 bucks and a, uh, ooh, a not insignificant amount of mag. The disaster was averted. <laughs> it would seem the disaster was averted. Yeah, if I had reached this point in the calendar and not beat the main dungeon, we'd be effed. Right then, 
Today's Forden's big announcement. Yep, here comes the main story, coming in hot. Wonder what he's planning. I guess the church has to have some reaction to all that stuff the king said. <laughs> Whatever it is, Luis won't be able to just ignore it. This might be a day that goes down in history. Oh dear. Somebody's gonna die. Somebody's gonna die today, I'm betting. Ladies and gents, lend me your ears. Ah, the crier again, huh? Sanctifex Forden has spoken. He did? I didn't hear him. The giant face in the sky, the massive rocks appearing throughout the land, and the mysterious voice claiming to be the past king. Oh, he's gonna say they're all bunk, aren't they? The Sanctus Church has officially recognized oh, okay. these happenings as the will of his royal majesty. I gotta say, there's no way they were getting away with that if they tried to call this out as BS. <gasps> so it really is his majesty. And so, as his majesty has decreed, whoever has gained the greatest trust of the people by the day of decision shall be our new king. And so you will all listen to the church. This is a historic moment, good citizens. It's revolutionary. It's unprecedented. No matter who you are, you can take the throne. Anyone? Mm hmm Even me? If, and this is a big if, you are the person that all our people trust most in their hearts. <laughs> Maybe you could be king yourself, eh? You're popular enough. Oof. Me? In charge? <laughs> well, that's the last thing this country needs. Right, let's review what we know, shall we? Okay. First, the new faces that have appeared on the rock. It shows us who's foremost in the running. We've worked out that much. Mm -hmm. The top three of the lot are also shown in the sky. Suppose that way you can see their inspiring faces anytime, anywhere. Hold on. How's us common folk supposed to stand a chance against all these upper crusters? That is the real crux of the question here, isn't it? Say you do become popular. With your face clear for all to see, surely that would make you a prime target for assassination. Not quite, friend. Not quite. A valid concern, but one His Majesty prepared for. Popular aspirants, at least those who make it onto the rock, are protected by royal magic. Assassinations off the table. Ah, I see. So you got to be in the top three. I guess that's why we're still allowed to be murdered left and right. Magic chains will spring to life and bind anyone who tries. I saw it happen with my own eyes to Count Luis's sorry assailant. <sighs> yeah, if only Grias had swung sooner before the rock had shown up. So, literally anyone could be king? Even a pauper? Or a slave? Or a criminal? Maybe. Uh, hold on, you mean to say we might not be ruled by Clamar? What does that mean for us? <laughs> right, I've said my piece. You know all I know. Now go forth, ladies and gents, and spread the word. Whether you're from our fair capital or the middle of nowhere, the crown's within your grasp. Anyone in the land could be our next king. <sighs> Well, we want the prince to be the king, so how the heck are we supposed to get him in, on the top of the heap when it's us that's doing the competing? I heard the announcement. The church has chosen to recognize this face's words as crown sent and shall abide by them. <laughs> they conceded that one quickly. Though I suppose it's a hard thing to deny, what with the royal palace hanging up there in the clouds. And the king's face staring down at them. Had they rushed a coronation for his eminence, Forden, it would have dashed any hope of reinstating his highness. A small comfort. I can tell from your face there's some bad news too. Yep. Do you recall those chains that froze Alces in place? It seems that too was part of His Majesty's magic. Plainly, any candidates of sufficient favor cannot be deposed by force. Which means we're stuck until the contest is over before we murder Louis. That's not good. Nope. No, tis not indeed. This marks Luis as nigh untouchable. I will still seek to find him. Yet, even should we stand before the man himself, we could not kill him. No! If we can't kill him, then how do we break the curse? <sighs> I don't know. What the hell was the king thinking? Grius was trying to save his son. He died for it. Yeah, well, 
the thing's pretty much automated. It's not like he actually is sentient. Actually, what if it is? God, that'd be a hell of a twist. Even so, without this magic, no aspirant would be safe from assassination, leaving Luis to dominate through sheer martial strength. <sighs> we appear to be at an impasse. Everyone, have you seen Maria? No. Did something happen? Oh, crud. I checked her room and she isn't there. Oh, god damn it. Where's Maria? She wouldn't just leave without telling anyone. I I couldn't deal with losing both of them. I oh, crap. I'll go look for her. Try to stay calm. We'll find her. It's alright. Just try to stay calm. I've searched all around the place, but I couldn't find her. When I think of what might happen to her. Uh, if she left her room on her own, she must have had some reason. Let's go search for her. If we head into town, we might find some clues. Agreed. Let's go. Ah, oh, crud. Maria, where did you get off to? Maria, where are you? You're kidding. Huh? Where could Maria have gone? Wait. Oh, no. No. Find Maria. Hang on, my memorandum just uh, got a nice big update here. The Royal Magic Protection. Seen as a way to prohibit the elimination of a candidate through force, what aspect of a king's royal magic was discovered somewhat belatedly? In the event that a top-ranking candidate with large support is in danger of bodily harm, the perpetrator will be immobilized by a glowing chain-like construction. The protective effect seems to only apply to the top 20 candidates, or those whose faces appear on the coronation rocks. Hmm. Resisting the magic chains and continuing to attempt harm results in the chains tightening, potentially causing death. However, what constitutes as harm is unclear, and it is not known if there are loopholes or exceptions. What else we got? Uh, bounty target. Found in all three major cities, one will find a list of targets to be subjugated or captured here, and by doing so gain a reward. Most requests are made by the state army, which is often short on manpower, and potential targets range from monsters to people. Ooh. The intelligence network of the state army allows information regarding bounties to be shared instantly among all recruitment centers. Ordinary citizens may also post bounties as long as they leave a deposit. <laughs> so as long as you've got the money to spend, you can get some state-sanctioned murder going, huh? Alright, where am I going, game? Where am I going? I got no markers at all, so I have no idea where I'm going. Oh, finally, someone who actually... Like, I've been trying to talk to people off to the right. It's like, hey, has anyone seen Marie lately? <laughs> Could it be that half-blood? If so, yes, then I did see her. She was muttering Papa and looking all sad. I saw her go through the back alley. Hmm. Ah, she went to the Grand Cathedral. Of course she did. It's not like I haven't been there multiple times already looking for her. I just needed to find someone to talk to. Is she here? Hmm? I don't tell me she snuck past the guards. Do you know that little half-blood girl? You can't let a girl like that walk the streets alone. You're just asking for trouble. <laughs> she just went inside. Wait, do you have to pass? Why? The way her eyes looks, I'd not be the one to stop her now. She's been coming to pray for a while, no matter how many glares she gets from me. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. Uh, Marie. You let her go in here? It's dangerous. Huh? Why? Uh, oh, God damn it! Uh, it did it again where I was trying to advance and it's like, nope, here's options. <laughs> Papa hasn't come home. And I always come here whenever I'm feeling lonely. One time he came here to get me. I remember because he called my name. But I pray. And he still doesn't come back. Maybe because the cathedral is broken? Oh crud, she doesn't really understand, does she? Maria. Miss Fabian says Papa can't come home anymore. Mm. But I know... Papa's gone away. He's gone somewhere, I'll never see him again. Hasn't he? <sighs> oh boy. <sighs> don't really like explaining death to a child, but here we go. It's... It's going to be so lonely. The loneliest it's ever been. But I have to be strong, don't I? Mm-hmm. But if it gets any lonelier, I 
I don't know if I can do it. Oh my goodness. Stop crying, Marie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I promised we'd all come back together. Why does everyone always leave? Mum was sick. The king and prince are gone. And now Papa? Why does everyone always leave? It wasn't his choice. Is it my fault? Oh my goodness, I really no. I did my best to be a good girl, but... It is not your fault. It's our fault. That's not at all why. That's not why. He's right, Maria. It's not your fault at all. Did my character's jaw, like, unhinge there when he talked? Because damn. Listen to me, all right? Your father, he... He was fighting a very bad man. We were with him, but... We couldn't protect him. I'm sorry. I remember Papa saying something like that. He said, a really bad man might be our king. Is that part of it? It is. Don't worry. It'll work out. Don't worry, my girl. It's going to be all right. Don't worry. Yeah, seriously, it, my character's mouth is so huge when he talks. Hmm. I hope the next king is as nice as you. Then maybe things won't always be so sad. <laughs> in my ideal world, people can believe in their future. Their birth doesn't matter. The prince told me that once. I think I understand the king's intentions now. Hmm? Maybe this is the sort of tragedy he was trying to end. Even though he inadvertently caused it. Maybe he wanted a world where the crown goes to one who acts like a king ought to. Not whoever's willing to spill the most blood to do it. You may be right, but much as we wish it, this is not a fight that might be ended through words alone. No, we need deeds on this one. Even so, we have to try. Yeah. All right, come on, Maria. Let's get you home. <sighs> Fabian's to be worried sick about you, Maria, my girl. Maria, you're safe. Oh, you had me worried sick. <laughs> Game's reading my mind again. I'm sorry for leaving on my own. No, it's all right. Miss Fabian. I... I'm hungry. Aw. Come on, let's make you some dinner. Maria. And she's been gone all afternoon. She probably hasn't had anything to eat most of the day. Yes, that's right. Let's all sit down for some supper together. Thank you for finding her. Ah, no problem. She's basically part of the group. <laughs> it looks like she's worked things out. She's a strong girl. But we've more troubles ahead. How now do we resolve this curse upon his highness? Good question. If Luis is the curse's caster, we've got to kill him to dispel it. So how do we do that if he's shielded by the king himself? Well, what if he's not shielded by the king anymore? You know, knock him out of the top 20. I wish I could report back, but... The prince is still asleep, and we're losing time. I don't think going back to the village is an option. Mm. We cannot lose faith yet. There must be some further course we can pursue. Well, there's the church's announcement. I expect they're trying to stop a wave of rival candidates from flooding the standings. I doubt the church would accept this popularity contest if they didn't already have a plan to game it. Hmm. True enough. I can only wonder at their aims. For today, we should content ourselves with rest and recovery. Huh. Interesting. So we're not planning on entering the contest? I thought that was the whole point of the game. <sighs> <sighs> Can't sleep, huh, buddy? Sorry. Did I wake you? Eh. Laying here, I always end up caught in my own thoughts. Grius and Maria. The prince... Just thinking in circles again. Not good, is it? Eh, let's think about it together. Try to calm your mind. I'm not awake enough for this shit, man. Come on. Let's think about it together. <laughs> Keeping me company, are you? You really are a strange one. My kind of strange, if I'm honest. That book. Is that the novel you're always carrying around? Mm-hmm. It's my fan fiction. You want to read it? <laughs> Feels like months ago now that I spotted you buried in it on the carriage ride to the fort. Well, weeks, maybe. <laughs> Want to read it? 
Oh, God dang it, I did it again. I, I look to the side because I'm watching, you know, their character, and I don't see the message pop up on the right side. If you don't mind, since we finally some room to breathe. <laughs> this is just going to end with everybody being Roxas shippers, isn't it? That's how this whole story is just going to end. Oh, interesting. It's written through the lens of a fictional land. This bit's about the Utopia's security. Mm -hmm. In this world, there is no blood-stained contest for sovereignty. The people choose their sovereign from among themselves. Ah, democracy! One cannot put a sovereign to the sword to seize power. Such an act would be met with scorn and judged as murder. Taking power or wealth by force is seen as the most shameful of transgressions. I wish. God, if only that were true here in the real world. <laughs> Couldn't be further from reality, could it? We have a Kingslayer on the brink of seizing the throne right now. And this idea of competing for public support. Here it sounds so commonplace, but the idea has thrown us all into chaos. Interesting. Perhaps I'm overthinking, but it sounds almost like the aim of the King's magic. You suppose there's some common inspiration? Maybe. Still, I don't imagine this would turn out well in the real world. In public opinion, tribal perspective always divides us. Yeah. Besides, does a decision made by the people guarantee it's right? Tribal squabbles aren't always political. Take us Clamars, for example. It can be hard for us to see outside the bubble of our own worldview. Mm. That's true out here too, my friend. We're the majority, and the tribe of the royal bloodline besides. That privilege can make us... Insensitive. A problem with no easy solution, I fear. Mm. Lofty words. I can hardly come to terms with my own ideals. Still, the discussions helped clear my head a little. Thank you. Ah, uh, no problem, Leon. I've been so fixated <laughs> on killing Luis, but... Maybe we could look into whether that's really the only way to lift the curse. <sighs> Sleep should come easier now. I think I'll give it another chance. <sighs> Sounds hey, nice. How long have you been asleep? <laughs> <laughs> we fell asleep the moment the book opened. He's just been talking time to himself the whole time. And the age of a new king draws nearer. All right. Waste of a day, but thanks. If I can get actually something progress, you know, make some actual progress here. Ladies and gents, have you heard the news? The curtain's about to rise on the show of a lifetime. Huh? To choose our new ruler, we're going to give all of you a chance to take center stage in a show of power for the whole kingdom. Oh, awesome. I'll, I'll jump on stage and we'll all just summon our archetypes and we'll just be like, vote for us. We can actually protect you. We're the ones that killed the human. And we call it the tournament. will set out on a grand tour of the three allied nations' capitals, taking part in a variety of exciting trials. Hmm. I'm not sure Louis actually agreed to this. Or if he did, he's already planning to sabotage them. First, we have the Exhibition of the Brave. Slay a monster plaguing our fair people and bring its head to Oceana's capital in time. Biggest find? takes the win. Ooh, ooh, we should have fun with that. Official word is, this event's open to all. So what do you think, ladies and gents? Are you in it to watch or in it to win? Oh, big beastie heads. Oh, that could be fun. Big, bad beastie heads. Who's got the biggest human head? Stroll, why call us so early in the morning? What is that journal? Hmm? Did he steal my fan fiction and is still reading it? I have Fabienne bring it up. Something occurred to me, so I asked her to go through Grius's personal effects. Oh, so now we're reading Grius's fanfiction. Hey, looks like he was investigating the curse too. There's a note here. Given the spell's complexity, it must have required a scribed formula. Okay. You mean to suggest... Juris possesses a written composition of the curse somewhere. And if we can find that... I mean, this is assuming he didn't destroy it afterwards, of course. Yes. I'd wager, even if we can't kill Luis, we might still have a shot at breaking the curse. But that attack took place years ago, didn't it? 
This curse's formula could be lost for good. We have little choice but to hope it's not. I'm not saying it would be easy. And the real trick will be finding it. We wouldn't leave it unprotected. I still think he would just destroy it, unless destroying the formula breaks the curse. <sighs> that reminds me. A crier for the church was handing these out. Hello? A flyer for the tournament for the throne. This popularity contest is state-sponsored now. Of course it is. <laughs> An interesting gamble for those politicians. I like the bit about all this being in the interest of fairness, those weasels. <laughs> the same as being organized by the state. The throne's empty. This smells like the theocracy at work, probably Forden himself. You think Forden's looking to fix the competition in his favor? Probably. He's been in first place this whole time. Yeah, well, he knows Louis won't stop it until he's basically won. In the interest of fairness, remember? If he wins a fair race, he gets legitimized, and Luis gets put on the back foot. That bodes ill. Those with existing support could easily solidify their claim. Even should his highness wake, he may lose the throne. <sighs> if we don't hurry and find a way to get close to Luis, we're sunk. Ah, what are we supposed to do? <sighs> this is the moment. We need a plan, and then we take action. As an elder, I'm an outcast in this city. I think that gives us an advantage here. We get the people's attention. We make Louis come to us. No, we enter the tournament for the throne. Let's enter this tournament for the throne. Huh? Hey, were you even listening to us? <laughs> Besides, the prince isn't exactly in a position to take part in- No, not for the prince, for us. Wait, it sounds crazy, but I think he might be onto something there. This could be just the excuse we need to get close to Luis. He doesn't care about your tribe so long as you prove capable, yes? That's what Zorba was saying. Wait, we're gonna do this as a ruse just to get close to Louis? Which means, even though the world looks down on you as an elder, having the power to kill humans puts you in his good graces. You know, even if we did also take out one of his big lieutenants. You're going to make him a candidate for the throne? <laughs> if all we need to do is get Luis's attention, then that's sure to get the job done. If we're lucky, he might even try to recruit us. I see. An undercover operation, is it? Quite a gambit. But it may well be our best chance at finding this formula. Oof. Just hold on a second! Getting Louise's attention is all well and good. But remember who's actually risking their life here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, us. Infiltrating Louise's ranks will be dangerous. If I'm found out, I'll be as good as dead. What do you think? Having heard all this, do you want to enter the running? I mean, it was my idea. I do. If it's for Maria, it's fate. Now, for Maria. If it's for Maria's sake. We'll do it for Maria's sake. I see. <laughs> right. I'm reminded of the words the prince spoke to me in our youth. In my ideal world, people can believe in their future. Their birth doesn't matter. <laughs> just the jaw. I can't get over the mouth movements of this game. It's just like, ah. No matter who someone is, they deserve a fair country. If it's to help achieve that, I will stand for the prince as a candidate for the throne. <laughs> Sheesh. So much for being a guide. Now you're the one leading me around. Yep. Your resolve has marked you a fine fit for the role. I have trusted you with my life before and would gladly do so again. Well, awesome. I would hate to lose you as a party member. You're too damn useful. I inherited Grius's journal as a piece of loot. <laughs> Good heavens. Haven't you put yourself in enough danger? Well, of course not. The game just started. Listen to me. I don't want you going down the same path he did. Are you really this set on running off again? Yep. I'll admit that I'm nervous. I have to carry on his legacy. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll admit that I'm nervous. I'll admit I'm nervous, but... <laughs> of course you are. Who'd not be in this situation? I'll be cheering for you in this mess of a competition. Truth be told, I wish I could do more than feed and shelter you. How about social link me? Could use more of them. What's the competition? <laughs> it's a big grand race to see who will be the next king. The whole country will be watching. Mm. So you're going to try and become king? 
Wow! Then I'll cheer for you as loud as I can. Ah, thanks, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> you have your first advocate, it seems. Ah. Suppose you'll have to actually try for the throne now, eh? Yep. Your Majesty. <laughs> he called us your Majesty. That's the plan. I'll never actually succeed. I hadn't thought of that. Ooh. I hadn't thought of that. He's like, ooh, wait, actually being king. Now there's a thought. Is it even possible? Who knows? Well, if we want Louise to notice you, we'll have to make quite a stir among the people. Maybe reaching for the throne will do it. Yeah, seeing an elder face on those stones will definitely put a stir in him. Does that mean you're not coming back? Mm. Oh, we'll definitely be coming back. No, we'll be back. Although we might be a while. <laughs> I don't like when it gets lonely. Understandable. Maria. But I'll be cheering for you. I hope you win the race. You'd be a good king. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. We'll meet again. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yeah. <laughs> She's adorable. God, if we no, could, we'd put her on the throne. Get registration out of the way, but we'll need some legs for the journey. It's mostly lawless wastes between cities. Legs. Judging by this specified deadline, we're unlikely to reach the Principality of Oceana's capital in time on foot. Hmm. We gotta get us some wheels. I bet all these fancy nobles have their own gauntlet runners to ride in. Oh yeah. Oh. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Can we steal one of those? A carriage might save our chances. If we could find one. Hmm? Perhaps we split up for now. I'll leave you two to the registration. They should be taking entrance at the recruitment center. Okay. I love how we have to formally register for a contest that everyone is already part of, but... This should be the place, right? Mm hmm Excuse us. We're looking to join the tournament for the throne. I? The young ain't ya? And who's the kid? He with you? I'm the entrant, damn it! I'm the one entering. Not a kid. I'm asking the questions here. I'm the one entering. You? Really? Mm-hmm. I've not heard of any age restrictions. They're a problem? Well... I'd not have thought it, but you're an elder, ain't ya? And you wanna be king. Well, the novelty of it might win you some looks. Kind of was the plan. Could you just do your job, please? Can he register or not? <sighs> oh, an elder. Now that I think of it. Uh-oh. He was there for our recruitment. Weren't you in that pack of recruits that went off to the northern fort? Oh, fuck. Thought I heard they were all wiped out. Well, we just got outed. Well, time to run. <laughs> what? We got a deserter turning up. Hardly. How about the survivor? No, they said he'd just dragged the company down, so they left him at the capital. He, um, got on the captain's bad side. Could swear I've seen you before, too. Yep. Well, hardly matters with no captain to verify with. Whew. Go on then. You can represent the lesser tribes so nobody complains. Damn. I am gonna so win this contest, and the first thing I'm doing is burying this freaking caste system. Or at least inverting it. <sighs> that was a close one. And, uh, obviously, you're gonna need a carriage. Otherwise, the whole thing's off for you. Yeah, I know. Now you're obligated to attend the opening ceremony tomorrow. Mm. It'll be at the plaza at the Grand Cathedral. Don't be late. I'm lucky us. We'll have to hope Hulkenberg can find us a carriage. As for us, I expect we should see about finding a monster to slay. If it's not impressive enough, Luis won't look twice at you. Now it's probably going to have to be another human. Some postings over there. They should be offering bounties on monsters the guard can't handle. Let's take a look. I thought I had the only bounty. Looks like everyone else had the same idea. Mm-hmm. One of these bounties is bound to make me stand out. But which? Bigger is probably better. <laughs> Hang on. There's nothing but small-time contracts here. Exactly. Are you lot here for this tournament, then? Yep. Bit slow, I'm afraid. Most of my worthiest monster bills have already been snapped up by other competitors. Ah, lovely. How about requests on anything aside from monsters? Bounties include criminals too, right? Hmm. 
I suppose I've got one of those, yeah. Eh? Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, wait, is that a six-figure sum for this guy? Ugh, he's horrible. Heisme. A villainous kidnapper. Looks like the army's been trying to catch him for a while now. This might just be perfect. <laughs> Whoa. Do you have any idea who that is? Holy shit. It's the trickster from Dead by Daylight as an elf. <laughs> that man's an elite. An ex-royal knight, they say. He'd make short work of a scrawny little urchin. You can be sure of that. <laughs> Besides, didn't you hear what it is they're actually looking for? Yeah, we know. Monsters. Oh, of course. It's about whoever can bring in the biggest monster head, right? If you imbeciles can't even get that straight, you've no chance of winning. They want kingly types, not children play acting. Uh, I think you qualify as children play acting more than we do, my friend. Stuck up little... Is that the kind of competition we can expect? You know, he kind of reminds me of Rufus from FF7. Especially with the dog following him. He was right about the rules, though. What are you thinking? Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I hope so. We're supposed to get a monster's head. So why are you going for a criminal? Any idea what he's up to? Uh, to stop his evil deeds. We don't need to win. Maybe he has a big hit. That's the plan, yeah. Leon's like, we don't need to win. We just need Louis' attention. Maybe it's because we don't actually have to win. <laughs> Sharp as always, Captain. Aha. Uh -huh. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. I love later. how they call me Captain, so they don't have to call my name out. <laughs> as long as you can convince Hulkenberg, I guess. Hmm. Hello there. Are you really taking the bounty on Heisme? Who are you? <laughs> you three must be heaven sent. Please, would you listen to our plight? Okay. Sure, why not? Your pardon, gentlemen. I'm Barton. A guard captain for Matira, a town to the south. The bounty on Heisme is up at my behest. Oh, okay. A guard captain? This fellow's made some powerful enemies. We can't afford lenience. On top of his past crimes, Heisme has stooped to abducting our wee ones. What? Our children. Selling them off some city. Okay, no, I'm gonna stop this guy on principle now. If our city becomes known for nightly disappearances, what sane resident would stay? Community and trade will dwindle and die. <sighs> but he's just a lone kidnapper, right? Even if he's some infamous criminal, why can't the guard handle it? That's the trouble. He makes us hide out somewhere too dangerous for our soldiers to tread. Deep in the territory of vicious giant worms. Ah, and that's where our squad comes in. We can clean house. We've no idea how he manages to operate out there without getting devoured himself. I see. Tricky problem indeed. I'd no choice but to swallow my pride and post a bounty. Yet no matter how many times I renew the bill, none have taken it. Until now. A pitiful sight, isn't it? A soldier who can't protect his own, whether by strength or by surrender. Laugh if you must. Never. You're not pitiful. We would never laugh. We want to help, my man. We just want to help you. You only cast away your honor in the name of protection. Nothing pitiful in that. Swallow your pride no more, man. We'll take your contract. <laughs> ah, thanks to you. That you'd accept such a perilous request. Even with this tournament looming over everything. Ah, oh, I'm sure we'll find some big old monsters we can smack too. Closure. Thank you all. And thank God for bringing you to me. <sighs> in that case, we shall meet to Matira, the old castle type. Please, make haste. Materia? <laughs> That's not how you spell materia. <laughs> well, no backing out of this now. You sure this is what we want? Mm-hmm. The way I see it, if we want to make a big impact this late, it's going to take some creativity. Besides, this is apparently a knight-turned-kidnapper. The man can't be allowed to go on. What would his royal highness do in our place? Oh, he'd go after him. I guess that's fair. I'll convince Hulkenberg. Somehow. You go on and accept the contract. <laughs> I just... You know, next time we see Leon, he's just gonna have a big goose egg on his head. Hello. New memorandum. A lot of new memorandum. 
Magic, really. Curse formula. A diagram of the formula created to cast the curse on the prince. The curse magic is so complex none of you have been able to undo its tangled weave. The convoluted nature of this spell has led to the belief the spellcaster drew the formula as they composed it. Obtaining and deciphering this formula may enable the curse to be revoked. Considering that Louis is protected by the royal magic and now cannot be killed, this is the party's last hope to lift the curse. Uh, I still don't think he'd keep it around. Matera! A town southwest of Grand Trot off the main road. Developed from a town originally formed around Kriegant Castle, a military stronghold of the Annex War. The town's distance from the main road gives it a sense of isolation and, some say, a certain gloom. One of Ukronia's closest towns to the Oceanian border, which made it a cornerstone of Ukronia's defense against Oceania during the Annex War. The relatively flat terrain affords the castle's watchtower a clear view of the town's environs. Any movement or mobilization from Oceania was thus immediately observed, making it impossible to launch a surprise attack on the town, especially as the war predated the invention of the swift, powerful gauntlet runners of modern fame. However, its time as the keystone of Ukronia's front lines has long since passed into history. Ah, the Principality of Oceania, one of the kingdoms of Ukronia's three constituent countries, occupying its westernmost lands. The Oceanian capital, Port Brylehaven, is the largest trade port in the kingdom. Owing to a history of extensive sea route trade with civilians and pirates alike, it's been known for, the po for its powerful navy since before the Annex War, and a rich culture centered on its warriors of the sea. Ooh, I wonder if I get a pirate class. Tournament for the Throne. A large-scale tournament where prospective candidates compete to gain the approval of the people. The winner of this popularity contest will then be crowned king. The Crown Theocracy proclaimed themselves to be the organizers after the invocation of the royal magic by the previous king. The stated purpose is for candidates to prove their worth by completing tasks while visiting the three capitals of the United Kingdoms. But could there be an ulterior motive? Oh, definitely. Hmm? Exhibition of the Brave. A grandiose event celebrating the first task of the Tournament for the Throne. For this exhibition, candidates are to neutralize a dangerous creature disrupting the peace of the nation. They must then bring its head to Port Brylehaven in the Principality of Oceana to await judgment of their asset by the masses. The party will have to prepare something spectacular to catch the attention of Louis, who has refused to participate in this mission. Oh! I didn't know that! I had no idea that Louis just decided to say no. <laughs> Barden. Elpheus Barden, a strapping Rosant warrior serving as captain of the Guard Corps in Materia. A man of integrity, his careful and fair judgment is so trusted he's treated his right-hand man to the Lady of Materia. He's traveled a great distance to Grand Trad to post a bounty for the criminal responsible for an unsolved series of kidnappings plaguing Materia. Huh. Louis sitting out? I guess he feels like he doesn't need to. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought this was automatic. You can tell me I actually have to manually accept the stupid thing. Alright, fine. Ah, <laughs> that's rich. I mean, a fledgling with no history of experience to speak of as king. That day makes me sick to my stomach. No, thank you. The ideal leader of this country is a dignified man of a great age, one with years of experience. And yet, up starts school children like you and Louis dare to. Oh, shut up. Huh, it hardly matters. You won't be able to fight much longer, so struggle as you like. I'd be happy to give the eulogy as your funeral. I suppose he's a candidate too. Lovely. Hey. Uh, hey, would it be alright if we accepted the bounty contract for Heisme? Heisme? You sure you can handle that? We can't be held liable if you get yourself killed out there. Of course I can. Uh, you're an old one, alright? Either that or you're just green. Head to Matera, you could probably get more information there. Let's focus. No deadline. Four difficulty, a hundred thousand big ones, and some courage. Let's call it. Okay, we got the contract. Let's head back to the inn for now. No registration issues, I trust? Eh, no more than usual. No, indeed. And we found ourselves a perfect target. <laughs> Fine work. Stroll. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna end badly. See, she's convinced. Nothing to worry about. You didn't even explain what the target was. Don't worry about it. I'll prepare a map of the surrounding areas as well. But never mind that. Have you found us a kingly carriage? A kingly carriage? Well, I have made some arrangements. Mm. How best to put it? The vessel itself is without peer. Supposedly, it will come to us on the day of the opening ceremony. Supposedly? I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Uh, you don't sound too sure about that. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I'm certain. All I mean to say is, well, you shall soon see for yourself. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, I'll take what we can get. And setting that up in a day. Not so bad having a knight on our side. <laughs> <laughs> you needn't speak so. In truth, I've just resigned from the knight's order. Ah. <sighs> Not surprising. It's only my bond of service I relinquish, not my title. We will shortly be seeking Luis's esteem. Should it come to light that I am a knight in active service, it may jeopardize our efforts. Ah, true. Still, you didn't hesitate to leave. I can tell you're serious about this. It was not an abrupt parting. I've come to doubt the order since returning to find them serving the Santifex and not the royals. Mm. Those who refused the church's rule were cast out for their defiance. I only hope those fallen knights found useful employ elsewhere. <sighs> they probably turned into bandits. Oh, Sounds my like luck. you've been through a lot too. Well, in any case, we can focus on our bounty contract now. Let's make sure we get some proper rest tonight. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, the opening ceremony for the tournament is tomorrow. Let's rest. We should probably stay inside and rest today. Yeah, I don't see any way to advance time. I imagine you're not gonna let me out, right? Nope. Bum. All right, let me double check, see if there's any new knowledge. There is not. Fine, call it a night. Sheesh. Hold me hostage, why don't you? I haven't seen Maria since I came back from the recruitment center. I wonder if something's wrong. Ah, she doesn't want to talk, her. Can I come in? Oh, aw. Come on in, Maria. Huh? Ah, what's wrong? Can't sleep? Want to read some more? Want to read some more? <laughs> Not today. Ah. Oh. You're all leaving tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. I'll be cheering for you. So, I... Hmm? I... I just... Oh, goodness. She's about to break down no, here. I promised Miss Fabian I wouldn't cry. <sighs> you don't have to worry. I won't tell her. It's all right. I won't tell her. <laughs> Pavel was trying to stop a bad man, you said. Yep. And that's what you're all doing too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Please come back home safe. I'll be waiting here as long as it takes. It's a promise. It's a promise. <laughs> all right. Promise? Yep. The next time I see you again, can you tell me more about the outside world? Sure. Uh, this one's important. Maria is waiting for us to return home and regale her with tales of the strange and distant places we visit. Curative Coney Roast reward, huh? I never got a chance to say this to Papa. So... Thank you. Aww. I'll go to bed now. She is a little blueberry muffin. Captain, may I have a moment? We need to protect her at all costs. <laughs> Good night. Let me guess, Leon told you what we're actually after. I was hoping for a chance to speak before we set out. Okay. Since our meeting, I've done nothing but impose on you. Now, you risk your very life for this cause. It is no easy burden. Eh, don't worry about it. Again. It pains me to see. When I think of how this may yet save His Highness, I lose sight of all else. <sighs> Such disregard ill becomes me. <sighs> don't worry about it. That's putting it mildly. You truly are devoted to him. You truly are devoted to him, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I am at that. A guiding oath of 12 years is not easily cast aside. But that book... Hmm? We met once before, on a carriage bound for the capital. Do you recall? Yep, the opening cutscene. I do. When you got me thrown out. <laughs> now that you mention it, I do. My apologies. I thought only to minimize casualties one way or another. That's okay. So... Tis a novel envisioning an ideal world. Curious to see a utopian novel these days. I'd thought them long since banned. I still don't know why, though. Why ban a book like this? Ah, uh, you needn't worry. I've no intention of taking it from you. Hm. I've sometimes wondered why such books were forbidden. Rumors say the Sanctists objected to their contents. Oh, of course the church was the problem. Of course. Yet I wonder. How could a simple book have possibly stunned them so? 
Do you mind if I read a passage or two? She's everybody's gonna end up reading my book before the end of this game. They're all gonna know how my story is before I do. Oh, justice. Or is this the voting thing? This is the voting thing. Fiction written as if a personal account. This chapter seems to concern the system by which the nation's leader is decided. In this country, one cannot become even a statesman, much less sovereign, without the consent of the people. Those who aspire to statecraft must first solemnly swear before the people what they will do in service of their country. Should they earn title but break their word, they are denounced and stripped of power. Such is the authority of the people. <sighs> Man, if only that were true here, right? In this way, it is the people who are the land's true king. Quite the opposite of our own country. Now I see why our upper echelons would abolish such texts. Yeah, don't want people getting ideas. Had our lands embraced such accountability, perhaps His Royal Highness would not have suffered such a fate. No. As a knight, it's not my place to say. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. <laughs> oh, I suppose. It is not so bad to dream now and then. <laughs> it takes power to walk the path of our dearest hopes. Perhaps that is the purpose of this newfound strength. My dearest dream. Tis to save his highness. Even at the cost of my life. Nothing more. Dang. No wonder you're the knight. All right, I lost another day. You know, that's how story goes. You lose days to the story. Hmm? Juno! Lady Juno! Juno? Who's this? And why should I care about her? Another one of the aspirants? Something tells me she's going to be trouble. Far away sky, oh! I was not expecting a musical number. Oh my god, the mouse person is adorable. He has a full choir behind her. <sighs> ah, so we found our pop idol for the game. I guess as close to a pop idol as we get in a fantasy world. Tribe is she though? Huh. That was wild. Hmm. <laughs> Even I'm feeling the heat. Well, I suppose it's time to fan the flames. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the inauguration of the tournament for the throne. <laughs> for the first time, the crown is anyone's to claim, as long as the aspirants can complete three grueling challenges. Wow, a sanctus crier. He's perfect for this. Let's discuss the venues. We kick off in the west, in the Pearl of the Coast, the Principality of Oceana's Harbour City capital, Port Brylehaven. Oh good, I was pronouncing there, that correctly. They face their first challenge, the exhibition of the brave. Each contender must bring back the head of a monster, a mark of their prowess and courage. Next, our would-be monarchs head east. Upon the misty peaks, we arrive in the Principality of Montario's beautiful city of faith, Alta Berry Heights. Okay, what are we doing and there? Finally, our 
our heroes make their well-deserved return home to Grand Trad. But first, let's do introductions. It's time to meet those risking their lives for the crown. Doesn't tell me what we're doing the in the others. I know him. You know him. It's Sanctism's one and only 78 Sanctifex, his eminence, Forden! <laughs> Victory to Sanctifex Forden! Giving him the WWE intro, huh? I claim no great ambition, nor any heated calls to action. All I wish is to restore order for our people and to safeguard our land from the threats beyond. What threats beyond? This chaos we face is but one of God's many trials. Let us restore our kingdom's glory together! <sighs> Crap, they didn't Moving tell us we were expected to do speeches. To his eminence's champion, the very spear in his hand, the warrior monk captain of the Crown Theocracy, Master Guido. I come before you only in loyal service of his eminence. I relinquish the throne to him gladly. Oh, wow. But those who would seize the crown by force, I will teach you to fear God and to fear me. So much for this being a fair competition. How many horses do the Sanctus have in this race? As many as they could throw at it, probably. It's not over by far. The Luis supporters won't take this lying down. Mm -hmm. What cowardice, Prior? Where's Count Luis? That is a good question. Where is Louis? Right, all right, settle down. At this time, I can report that Count Luis has not applied to enter the tournament. Mm -hmm. What? He's not even entering? Then what becomes of us? Our entire purpose in this race was to get closer to him. Don't worry. He's definitely paying attention. He's only in second as it is, so we can't afford to ignore this whole production. Sit tight. I'm sure he'll make a move soon. Yeah. All right, all right. For those Count Louis supporters, you might want to meet our next entrant. A rising socialite, a man of ambition, godless and fearless, the brash young warrior serving Count Louis, Gladell, the Black Hound. Ah, so he's a Louis man. So he was one of Louis's men. The fallen king embraced sanctism and all its holy tenants, and for what? He was nothing before Lord Louis. Look to the sky all you wish. No god can save you. What our country needs is power. Oh, that'll never end well. Well, it's not quite all the contenders, but let's get on with the introductions. The great liberal merchant, it's Roger Ward. By war, by conquest, by right, it's Rudolf Krauss. In it more for the gauntlet runners than the throne, it's Lena Caden. Oh my gosh. He's sure to be popular by pledging free drinks for life, <laughs> it's Loveless O'Shea. Free drinks for life? Damn. And lifting the beautiful and deposing the hideous, it's Milo Maurizio. Wow, uh, if we lose this... I think the country has some even bigger problems. Yep. <laughs> a bunch of goofballs. Now, I do believe we have one final candidate. Do we have an Elden Boy present? Come on, huh? let's see a face. That'd be us. Utter silence from the crowd. What? An Elder? Disgraceful. Is this the only way you could think to distinguish yourself? Wow. Yeah, no love for this group. Oof. <clears throat> by the way, the ride you applied with still hasn't arrived. And uh, if it doesn't show up by the time the noon bell rings, you're disqualified. All right? Oh, lucky us. Hey! What's going on? Hockenberg, where's our ride? Wait! What is he doing? <sighs> Oh, he's gonna sing a LaBelle early, so, isn't he? Contestants, are you ready? Oh. Huh? The hell? What? Last, I say! Wait! How'd you behave? Oh my god. 
Oh, that must be our ride right there. A land runner? It's quick. Wait, it's headed right for the... Brakes, brakes! Oh, God. <laughs> Our ride's here, I guess. <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, beautiful. So much for a first impression. <laughs> what hell? Isn't he a marvel, chums? You don't! You nearly brought down the cathedral. Ooh. Have a care, you fool. It was bad enough when Luis did it the first time. <laughs> that feckless, shameless old fool. Is that Never. Sid? <laughs> I guess you've got some interesting tricks up your sleeve after all. <laughs> right! I'd call that a full roster! Ladies and gentlemen, race across the land! Go! Prove yourself worthy and earn your crown! For the people, for the throne! Let the games begin! <laughs> it's very interesting that Louis is not even participating. Though I guess he doesn't need to. I mean, the tournament itself is mostly just a sham at this point, isn't it? Like, all that matters is the king's judgment, and the king's judgment is he who has, you know... <laughs> like, he who's, like, in the hearts of the people. It's incredible. The tournament's just kind of a way for the uh, church to legitimize everything and kind of throw everything in their favor. And with that, we're gone! We've left the main city. Oh. The five thousands. I ended up standing out more than I expected. I've gained a lot of interest, but I only consider this a part of my mission to aid the prince. Just a sec. Whoa! What's with this thing? Is this a carriage? Uh, can you hear me? Ooh, oh, that's an interesting voice. <laughs> Shall I just run along the main road then? The others seem to be doing as much. Uh... You're just as crazy as this runner thing. I'll take that as a compliment, little lady. Now, let's have some coordinates for a little test run. Oh, God, what is happening right now? Let's see. Um, we want to go to a place called Matera. Old Castle Town, I think. Should be away south. Oh. Oh. Oh, this takes time, doesn't it? That's what they said. Every one of these is a day. Let's Interesting. See. Hold on. So yeah, this is where we're going. Wow. Yeah, okay, Matera, here it is. Hmm. Oh, down to Matera, eh? On this craft's legs. Oh, I'd say that'll be four days, three nights about. Oh. oh. Four days and three nights. That's a great deal faster than a carriage. And surely the roads will be safer at that kind of speed. Bolly good. Now clinch those britches, chaps. Full steam ahead to Matera, old castle town. Hmm. This wow. is amazing! I don't know a thing about gauntlet runners, but even I can tell this is a hell of a craft. Ooh. I can hardly believe she's ours to drive. Well, ours to ride in at least. You're telling me that! Feels like ages since I've been out on the open road! This girl's been waiting long enough for her time to shine. So this is what you use to talk with the driver. Convenient, that. Indeed. Look, old fellow, are you really on our side? You realize we don't have funds to pay you. I don't know, I can give him the 100k from the bounty, maybe. Money? Ha! I'm not in this for the money, boy. What I want is a little gusto. What do you think, that? Isn't this a rush? <laughs> it is at that. Like riding the wind. Yeah, kind of a bumpy ride, though. That's the ticket. <laughs> It's been so long since I've had a good chinwag. Brilliant, isn't it? This guy is a character. It's amazing. Is it safe? Not interested. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> You've a good head on your shoulders, boy. Yes, I can tell you're a sharp one. Huckleberg, where did you dredge up this guy? Where to, ladies? The world is our shellfish. <laughs> You certainly are a different person behind the wheel. <laughs> hey, Hulkenberg! Can we get an explanation yet? Please? That man is Neurus. An Ishkia, if it was not obvious from the wings. Well, I didn't see the and wings. Despite everything, he was heir to a noble house and personal machinist for the royal family. Oh my god, I thought for a second he was about to start scratching his balls with that pose. What? 
He's a master engineer, of course, positively peerless. But as you can see, the runners get him a bit <laughs> excitable. <laughs> there you go, little slouch. Nice. Ooh. Flashback, I imagine. Nioras? Are you there? I'm coming in. <laughs> Ding, ding. <laughs> Even amidst all this commotion in town, I find you buried in your work. Ah, too much to do. As always. To business then, I must ask a favor. Would you be able to ready a carriage for me? Hmm. No new commissions, no time for them. Ask another right. Huh. It is not the new one I require. Before his highness disappeared, did you not accept a contract to build him a custom carriage? Oh, that's how. This is the prince's personal ride. Without a formal owner, I reasoned that it must <laughs> now lie unused. I was hoping I might borrow it a short while. Dude, he stopped hard when she mentioned the prince. Pish and tosh, woman. She is for royal use and naught else. How about royal business? Tis an unreasonable request, I know. But I'd not be asking without a grave need. Might I at least see it? Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, well, um... Let me guess, it's not finished. Twas specially made for his highness, yes. Not a work you'd have sold off. Where lies it now? I... I've deadlines to meet, dash it! Off with you now! Leave me be! <laughs> You've been acting stranger than usual. What ails you? Hmm? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh! She hit the light switch. Good God. There it is. Man, that thing is gorgeous! Oh, it's got a big sled on it, that's what it is. A gauntlet runner? The very craft commissioned for His Highness the Prince? Mm-hmm. And the one we're now borrowing. Oh, I see. We're riding in the lower section. Still, you toiled away. Oh, Nuras, you are an inspiration. Such nobility of purpose. Um, yes. <laughs> right. So how'd we get him on our side? Did we tell him that the prince is still alive? Hmm? Hulkenberg? However, for a craft meant for the royal family, it is rather... excessive, isn't it? <laughs> Did you... really build this vehicle exactly to their orders? Oh. Oh, we, we took some liberties, huh? <laughs> yep, that's what it was. We took some very big liberties. You cannot mean... Well, at first, it was certainly, I followed the blueprints exactly. But then His Highness died, and, uh, well, I, I couldn't just let the old girl waste away. A masterpiece like her? Collecting dust in storage? No! Unacceptable! Unthinkable! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am already starting to enjoy Nuris. <laughs> I'm working toward a dream, and this, this poor old girl is going to help me see it through. And then, finally... Hmm? You imbecile! What? A lowly, brazen court engineer, butchering His Highness's inheritance for a hobby! For this... mania! You embezzled the royal treasury and disrespected his legacy! Treason! Damn, Hulkenberg's going off. <laughs> ah, ah, mercy, please. Look, take my head if you must, milady. But leave the value runner alone. <laughs> Look, this runner is fully operational now, is it? Mm -hmm. Then I suggest you cooperate for both our sakes. Finish your tinkering by tomorrow and bring it to the Grand Cathedral as soon as you can. Eh? What's all this now? You play the proud soldier at me and then pluck it for your own schemes? <laughs> There's no scheme! I would use it for His Highness's sake. 
For his highness, eh? Oh, so we are gonna let this slip, maybe. Well, at least partially. Hold a tick. Haven't you been looking for him? Wandering across God knows where last I heard. So if you're back now and... Mm -hmm. And now you want a gauntlet runner for his highness? Yeah, somebody can put two and two together and maybe come up with four. <laughs> is, is his highness still alive? That's it. I've got you, haven't I? Uh, time to die. <laughs> Twas his highness who gave you refuge while you were only a heretical scholar condemned by the Sanctists. The time has come to repay his mercy. <laughs> Understood. And that's how we got our own gauntlet runner. <laughs> Is that enough? Can this old duck really handle an undercover operation? Better. I know what you're thinking, but it is at least true that he feels an undying debt of gratitude to the royal family. Pish and tosh, boy. A little faith. Not to brag, but this old duck's craft might be the fastest gauntlet runner in the kingdom. Why, probably the world. Really? Cool. I think. Maybe. <laughs> How encouraging. All I want is to push this runner as far and as fast as she can go. Show her off to the world. And you? Well, I presume you'd rather work together than have to walk, eh? Uh, yeah, considering it'd probably take us a month to get there. I don't know about this, but I guess we'll just have to trust him. What do you think? I mean, I think we can count on him. It's better than nothing. If we die, we die together. <laughs> I think we can count I on think him. We can count on him. If you're sure, I suppose. We'll deal with it if we have to. Either way, he knows the prince is alive. So we can't just leave him to his own devices. We're all in the same boat. Or runner, I guess. Dude, how are you supposed to sleep with this thing rattling all the time? You lot can handle the fighting, and I'll handle all the driving and grease work. Just make sure you've got a proper plan for all this mess now. <laughs> this guy's got no filter. But he has a point. We do need to talk strategy. All right, let's talk strategy. Man, I need a save point. So, summing up. Our first trial is to slay a monster. We take its head as proof, then get it to the goal line before the deadline. The bigger the head, the better. Hmm. Our destination is Port Brylehaven, the capital of the Western Principality of Oceana. It'd be a trek on foot, but this gauntlet runner should make it a snap. So getting the bounty's head is our next move. And our target is a nefarious criminal who's been kidnapping and selling off children. Right? Yeah. A criminal? Did the task not specify a monster's Oh my god. Leon, you haven't told her yet? Don't worry. All part of the plan. We don't need to win this thing. We just need to get Luis's attention. Everyone's going to show up with monster heads, and we shake things up with a felon. A knight turned kidnapper at that. Shows them we're there for justice. Besides, you know, we'll probably still find a giant monster head along the way. Just like, oh yeah, by the way, here's our backup. Just poised to like a 50-foot Godzilla head. Us to deliberately violate the rules, we risk being disqualified entirely. I don't know. Can you call a kidnapper a monster? I would. Then again, it is just as likely to win the people's attention and thereby Luis's. I do understand the intent. What do you think of this plan? I mean, it's perfect. It sounds impossible. I trust all of you. I think it's crazy enough to work. I think it's a perfect idea. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> the bounty's Heisman, an ex knight. I realize that's a little close to home, Hulkenberg, so if you'd rather hang back. Oh, no, that's gonna incense her nothing even more. No. His title is precisely why I cannot let his atrocities stand. And yet, it is strange indeed that we are hunting a mere man when the trial demands a monster. Then again, our true aim is beyond the ambitions of any other aspirant. Our fate rests in this plan of yours, Stroll. Lucky us. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll try to ensure your trust isn't misplaced. <laughs> ah. Oh, goodness me. All right. Right, sir. Then our course is set. Feel free to use anything in the gauntlet runner. Even got a bathing room if you could use a wash. Oh, I'm sure we could. <laughs> Good to know. We can always look around more thoroughly later. Hmm. Yes. 
You needn't tire yourself out before we arrive. Dude, we've got days. Well, I'm a tinkerer and not much else. All my fighting happens in the old workshop. But I'll take you wherever you're going for your sake and mine. After all, the wilds out there are no fairy picnic. Oh, no. It's a den of wild beasts and savage scoundrels. And we'll not get past it without days on the road together. <laughs> so, if you need anything besides a steady hand on the wheel, give me a hoot. Bound to find me in the cockpit or the engine room. <laughs> Goodness me. He's certainly an eccentric. <laughs> but he doesn't seem like a bad person. We'll get used to him. I suppose. <laughs> you suppose? Oh, my, oh my, oh my. All right, the Gauntlet Runner has various areas for different activities, such as a strategy room, the lounge, and the kitchen. You can also visit Academia by finding more and interacting with him. Let's visit the engine room first. Take your time and have a look around on your way there. Oh, yeah? I've never been in a Gauntlet Runner. Kind of want to see what the engine room's like first. Well, I think we'll save that for another day. Oh, hold on. Let's do memorandum first, and then we'll call it a day. Since we've got entries in here to deal with, right? Oh, a bunch of them. Shit. There's a bunch in here. Ishkas! A tribe recognizable by their avian wings, as well as their almond eyes and long eyelashes. Though the fewest in number of the eight tribes, they have a reputation for their intelligence, giving them a strong presence in bigger cities. Many find higher status in intellectual labor, such as scholars and sanctors and the like, making it not uncommon for Ishka to be wealthy. Due in part to their regal stature, the Ishka are commonly admired. However, the act of speaking down on others has been ingrained in their nature for some, making it just as common for them to be resented. Incidentally, their avian-like wings are purely cosmetic. Though they are able to move them to a small degree, they have no structure. They're actually just clusters of feathers. Those who aren't fond of the Ishka latch onto this deficiency of flight to ridicule them, as if they could fly any better, right? Nurus! Nuras Korax, a genius engineer of the Ishka tribe, he can single-handedly manage all things Gauntlet Runners, from planning to maintenance to piloting, and was contracted to build the Princess Gauntlet Runner before the Prince vanished. He comes from a noble, highly respected family with a stately mission in Grand Trad, but as he shows absolutely no interest in social status or family prestige, is dismissed by his family as an unmanageable goofball. <laughs> Despite his pedigree, his appointment to build the Princess Runner was solely based on merit, not his social standing. Since then, Nurse has retained a strong sense of gratitude towards the royal family. Unfortunately, as both the prince and king met successive suspicious ends, Nurse was unable to repay their favor, which burdened him greatly. Until now! All of a sudden, he can do this. Uh, Gido! Ovis Gido, a muscular, bald-headed Rosante warrior who serves as both captain of the monk army, the enforcement arm of the crown theocracy, and Forden's primary bodyguard. He assumed the role of captain after his predecessor lost his life during the suppression of the Mage Academy in Montario. He specializes in a unique fighting style that combines magic, staff, and spear techniques passed down through generations of warrior monks. He's gonna be a problem. Glodel, Ideas Glodel, a young Rosante warrior who serves Louis in his lower rungs. Keeping his dog at his side even in battle, he's earned the title the Black Hound out of both fear and ridicule. Because Louis did not formally enter the tournament for the throne, Gladell entered of his own volition to secure Louis' following and act as a proxy for their support. He hopes that if he can make a name for himself in the tournament, Louis will acknowledge him finally. <laughs> uh, acknowledge me, Louis Senpai! <laughs> Batlin, Albus Batlin, a Clamar man who works as a crier for the Crown Theocracy. Most criers prefer rhetoric that venerates and strengthens the authority of sanctism in the royal family, but Bolton is the opposite, prioritizing the provocations of the people as though commentating on a sport. Though highly admired amongst the town people, he drew the ire of the crown theocracy for his roguish methods. However, when the royal magic made what accounted to one's popularity the sole factor in succession, the crown theocracy pivoted, suddenly assigning Bolton the monumental responsibility of heading sanctism's public relations as the tournament's official crier. Oh, thank God. We just get to keep him around, you know, permanently. Hold on, Milo. Uh, Milo Marzorio, an Ishka candidate participating in the tournament. A princely man claiming to be an illegitimate son of the Montario royal family. He pledges to adopt a caste system based on beauty with himself, the most beautiful of all, bestowing grace and honor upon the country as its king. His suave looks and mannerisms have earned him a devout following. Each time he smiles from the stage on his gauntlet runner, the Palace of Beauty Hildebrand! <laughs> You're shitting me, Hildebrand! <laughs> Shrill screams can be heard from the ladies of the crowd below. Oh my god, he's a fucking boy band man. 
a gauntlet runner engineer. An engineer that designs and maintains gauntlet runners, obviously. Because Magla Crystal's power runners, engineers need to be familiar with the workings of magic and magic igniters, but they also need to be well versed in a wide range of fields, from dragon crystal technology for movement to armaments for battle. As the cost required a substantial, engineers almost exclusively come from noble families who own gauntlet runners. Well, my friends, that is all the time we have for today. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite, and subscribe to join me for more fantastical racism. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.